walk in the true fruit of the Spirit. They never will. They're trying so hard to be good. They're trying so hard to obey God's law and get everybody else to obey God's law too. But they will never find the freedom that actually comes when the fruit of the Spirit actually comes out in your life. I mean, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, humility, and self-control. Against such there is no law. When you submit to the righteousness of God, the fruit of the Spirit comes out in your life, and it's the only way people will live free from sin. It's the only way. There is no other way. The law, preaching the law, telling people what they have to do and not do to be approved of God, to qualify for God's promises, will never set anybody free. It will only put them in bondage to more sin and more condemnation. It's only when we finally give up our own righteousness that we will truly live righteous lives. Now, I want to show you, this is so powerful. The Apostle Paul is a perfect example of someone who gave up his own righteousness and submitted himself to God's righteousness. You want to know what that really looks like? We're going to read it right now. Philippians 3, 4. Though I could have confidence in my own effort. See that? Effort. If anyone could, indeed, if others have reason for confidence in their own efforts, I have even more. If you think you're going to put your trust in your efforts, you better look at what I've done. That's what he's saying. I was circumcised when I was eight days old. I'm a pure-blooded citizen of Israel, a member of the tribe of Benjamin, a real Hebrew if there ever was one. I was a member of the Pharisees who demand the strictest obedience to the law. I was so zealous and harsh, and I harshly persecuted the church. And as for righteousness, I obeyed the law without fault. The very credentials these people are waving, waving around as something special, I'm tearing up and throwing out with the trash, along with everything else I could take credit for. I love that. And why am I doing this? Because of Christ. The Apostle Paul, when he submitted, and I'm going to keep reading here in a minute, but when he submitted to Christ's righteousness, he tore up every good thing he thought about himself outside of Jesus. He said, it doesn't mean anything. My Anything good I've ever did, any law I've ever tried to follow is nothing. I throw it in the trash because of Jesus. Yes, all the things I once thought were so important are gone from my life. Compared to the high privilege of knowing Christ Jesus as my master firsthand, everything I once thought I had going for me is insignificant, insignificant, dog dung. I've dumped it all in the trash so that I could embrace Christ and he and be embraced by him. I didn't want some petty, inferior brand of righteousness that comes from keeping a list of rules. When I could get the robust kind that comes from trusting Christ, God's righteousness. I don't want the kind of righteousness that comes by trying to obey a list of rules. When I can have the perfect righteousness of Jesus Christ. I don't want the kind of righteousness that comes by my human effort of trying to be good enough and trying to do everything right when I could be made right by God's grace, by the gift of righteousness in Jesus. The Apostle Paul said, I give up my human effort. I give up all my good works so I can embrace Jesus and be embraced by him. Isn't that good news? This is what it means to submit to the righteousness of God. You give up your ability to hear from God. You give up your ability to love people. You give up your strenuous effort to be kind and not be jealous and all of those things you think you have to do. You give it up and you embrace his work inside of you. His power inside of you. Jesus' perfect righteousness. You are everything God has ever wanted you to be. And when we embrace Jesus, 
and are embraced by him, we are one with him. Everything he is, we are. We are kind. We are holy. We are innocent. We are perfect in God's sight. We are free from condemnation. We are merciful and compassionate people because we've embraced God's righteousness and not trying to be compassionate people on our own. You give up your effort. You give up your strenuous striving for the glory of the Lord, his righteousness. Listen to what Paul, the Apostle Paul says in Galatians. For what, Galatians 2, 19 through 21. I love this. For when I tried to keep the law, it condemned me. So I died to the law. I stopped trying to meet all its requirements so that I might live for God. My, own, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless, for if keeping the law could make us right with God, then there was no need for Christ to die. If keeping the law, if your human effort and your doing, your obedience could qualify you for God's promises. If you could do it in your own power, there would be no reason for Jesus to die. If righteousness could be gained by obedience to the law, Jesus died for nothing. He died for nothing. So when we hold on to our own righteousness, we are, it, we're making what Jesus did for us insignificant in our lives. It's like we're saying, it wasn't enough. What you did, Jesus, wasn't enough for me. I've got to still do it myself. But the apostle Paul said, when I tried to keep the law, it just condemned me. So I gave it up for Christ's righteousness. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. The difference between those who are trusting in their obedience to the law for righteousness and those who are trusting in Jesus for righteousness is shown very clearly in these next verses. Romans 10, 5 through 13. For Moses writes that the man who can practice the righteousness, perfect conformity to God's will, which is based on the law with its, its in, thank you, intricate, shall demands shall live by it but the righteousness based on faith imputed by god bringing right relationship with him says do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven that is to bring christ down or who will descend into the abyss that is to bring christ up from the dead as if we could be saved by our own efforts but what does it say the word, God's message in Christ, is near you on your lips and in your heart. That is the word, the message, the basis and object of faith which we preach. Because if you acknowledge and confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and in your heart believe, adhere to, trust in, and rely on the truth that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes adheres to, trusts in, and relies on Christ, and so is justified, declared righteous, acceptable to God. And with the mouth he confesses, declares openly, and speaks out freely his faith, and confirms his salvation. The scriptures say that no man who believes in him, who adheres to, relies on, and trusts in him, will ever be put to shame or be disappointed. No one, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord over all of us, and he generously bestows his riches upon all who call upon him in faith. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Thank you, Jesus. The scripture says, if you're going to live by the law, verse 5 says, Moses writes that the man who practices righteousness by the law must live by it. In other words, if you're going to try to be righteous by the law, 
then you got to do everything perfect. You cannot miss one thing. If you're going to tell somebody or tell yourself that you have to do this, this, and this to be approved by God, you have to do it all perfect. You can never sin. You can never mess up or you're disqualified. If you're going to live by the law, you got to be perfect in every way. So who wants to live by the law? Not me. I'm giving it up for the righteousness that God ascribes. It says, but the righteousness that's based on faith says, do not say in your heart, who will? Now, I want you to circle that, who will? Who will? Who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? Who will? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. As if we could be saved by our own efforts. It's saying, the righteousness that is based on faith, those who are living in faith righteousness, does not say, who will do this? Who will do that? As though you can be saved by your own human effort. Who will go up and try to bring Christ down? He's there forever, seated at the right hand of God, purchased and paid for righteousness for every man who will accept it. He doesn't need your help. And he's already went into the, into the abyss and and paid the penalty for your sin. He's already paid the penalty. You don't have to pay the penalty for yourself. You don't have to go down and pay the penalty for your sin for yourself. Jesus did it. So we don't say who will do this and who will do that so that we can be approved and blessed and made righteous before God. But what do we say? What does the person who has embraced the righteousness that God gives say? Let's read it again. Because if you acknowledge and confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, why did he raise him from the dead? To secure your righteousness. Why did he go in the grave? To pay the punishment for your sin. Why did he rise up from the grave? To secure your righteousness forever. He doesn't need any help from you. So he who confesses, Jesus, you are my righteousness. You are my righteousness. For he who confesses, I love this, with the heart a person believes and is justified. And with the mouth, he confesses, Jesus is my righteousness and is saved. No one who ever trusts in Jesus will ever be put to shame or disappointed in their expectations. No one who trusts in Jesus will will ever be disappointed by God's promises not manifesting in their life. If you trust in your good works, if you trust in your ability, you will be forever disappointed and you will be forever put to shame. Shame comes with trusting in our own ability to be righteous. But when you trust in Jesus and you submit to his righteousness and you trust that he made you righteous and you confess it with your mouth. Lord, you know what? I go all, all, all the time. I'm talking to Jesus. I'm talking to the father about the gift of righteousness he's given me. It's like my consuming fire. I am addicted to Jesus. Did you know that? I am not kidding you. I am addicted to Jesus. He is my everything. He is my righteousness. And when I find myself in trouble in this life, I always say, Jesus, you are my righteousness. I know you love me because you made me righteous. And you said you would deliver the righteous. And I thank you that you 
are a God of your word. And I will never be put to shame or disappointed that your promise doesn't manifest in my life because I'm put my trust in you. That's what it means to not be put to shame and never be disappointed. If God said it because he made you righteous, he will do it. If you're trusting in Jesus. And as long as you're trusting in yourself, you know what? I said something yesterday that I never said before. I'm going to share it with you. I was talking to a friend. And I have said, when you, when you rest, God works. And when you work, God rests. I have said that before in my teachings. But yesterday, when I was talking to somebody, I said, when you rest, God works. But when you work, God waits. He waits for you to turn to him, to call upon the name of Jesus. When you're working, he's going to let you work until you hit your head against the brick wall a few times and realize you can't save yourself. When you're working, he's waiting. He's waiting for you to turn to him. And call upon Jesus as your righteousness. Because all who call upon Jesus as their righteousness, that's what this scriptures are talking about. It's talking about righteousness, God's righteousness, embracing, submitting yourself to God's righteousness and not being made righteous on your own. All who call upon the name of Jesus as their righteousness shall be healed, saved, delivered, favored, blessed, joyful, peaceful, the power of the Holy Spirit working in their lives, loving people, compassionate, humble. That's what salvation looks like. Salvation is inclusive of every blessing bestowed on us in Christ. All who call upon the name of the Lord, all who submit themselves to God's righteousness will never be disappointed in their expectations. They will see God's glory manifest over and over and over again in their lives because that's the salvation of God. I'm going to read this to you in the Message Bible and then I'm going to end because I know I'm going long. This is so powerful and I'm going to share something real fast with you before we end. Romans 8, 10, 8 through 13. In the Message Bible, so what exactly was Moses saying? The word that saves is right here, as near as the tongue in your mouth, as close as the heart in your chest. It's the word of faith that welcomes God to go to work and set things right for us. This is the core of our preaching. Say the welcoming word to God. See, the welcoming word to God. Jesus is my master, embracing body and soul. God's work of doing in us what he did in raising Jesus from the dead. That's it. You're not doing anything. You're simply calling out to God, trusting him to do it for you. That's salvation. Trusting him to do it for you. That's salvation. With your whole being, you embrace God setting things right, and then you say it right out loud. God has set everything right between him and me. Scriptures assures us no one who trusts God like this, heart and soul, will ever regret it. It's exactly the same no matter what a person's religious background may be. The same God for all of us acting the same incredibly generous way to everyone who calls out for help. Everyone who calls help God gets help. He's waiting for you to call out for help. Call out to Jesus. He's waiting. And I just got to tell you this. I'm going to tell you my, my most recent cry for help. A couple of weeks ago, I had to go downtown for a meeting. I had to be there at 9 o'clock. And I just want to inform all of you, don't ever go downtown without some cash in your wallet because you'll never find a parking spot without Jesus. 
So I go downtown and I'm looking for a parking spot. I have no cash in my, in my wallet. Every parking lot says $5 here, $3 here, coin machine here. I have no money. I don't have time to save myself. I don't have time to run to an ATM and get me some cash. So I circle around the place I'm supposed to be at looking for some parking spot. And after I had tried my own efforts for about 10 minutes, looking for a parking spot, thinking how I was going to save myself, thinking, well, maybe I should just park and take the ticket. And if my car gets towed, I'll just have to get it out of the towing place. You know, I'm sitting there not submitting to God's righteousness, trying to save myself, thinking of how am I going to fix this problem I'm at. And then all of a sudden, I realize negative emotions are running in my heart. I'm feeling anxious. And God was waiting. My father, Daddy God, while Connie was working her little mind trying to figure out how to fix her problem, because that was my problem that day, he was waiting, waiting for me to call out for help, waiting for me to call out for him to rescue me one more time. As I came around the corner and I was feeling anxious in my heart, I just called out to Jesus. I said, Father, I need a parking place. <laughs> and I need one now. And you said if I call out for help, you would hear me and you would deliver me from all my troubles. That's what I said. I'm having a trouble right now. God, I got to have a parking spot and I can't find one and I have no money. And I thank you for rescuing me. And I'm sitting there just talking to him, calling out to help. I go around the corner and all of a sudden, I see this parking lot open. I don't see any signs. Now, I have been past this parking lot several times, believe me, because I've been going around the parking, you know. I go into the parking lot. I pull into the parking slot. I look for the number. You know, there's a number on every part downtown. You have to put the no number. I look for a coin machine, no coin machine. I look around. I'm like, wow, there's a parking parking lot that doesn't pay cash in downtown. Okay, great. I got out of my car. I went right in front of where I was supposed to be. I didn't have to walk three blocks, one block, nothing. Walked right up to where I was supposed to be. Was there for a couple hours, came back down, got in my car, and I got ready to leave. I'm going out of the parking lot, and there's this lady sitting in this booth, and this, this gate right here, I can't get out of the parking lot. And I look at the lady, and I said, uh, does it cost money to, to, to park in this parking lot? She said, yes, ma'am, it does. Did you get a ticket when you came in this parking lot? I said, no, ma'am, I did not see no ticket when I came in this parking lot. She goes, did you not see the flag that was down? No cars can get in this parking lot without pulling a ticket and making the flag come, you know, the little gate come up. I said, ma'am, I'm so sorry. There was no gate when I came in this parking lot. I see no ticket and I have no cash to pay this. And she said, ma'am, you don't have a ticket? I said, no, I don't have a ticket. She said, okay, go on. You don't have to worry about it. Just go on. <laughs> I was like, thank you, Jesus. I don't know how I didn't see the booth. I don't know how I got in the parking lot without making the gate go up. Today, I'm still bewildered by the whole experience. But I called out to Jesus, and he rescued me one more time. That was my little trouble. I've had bigger ones. But I'm just telling you, when you call out to Jesus, when you're done trying to fix your own situation and problems, when you're done trying to work in your own righteousness, and you submit to his righteousness, by calling out to Jesus, you said you'd do this for me, Lord. You made me righteous. I can't earn it. I can never deserve it. It's a gift. Thank you for rescuing me one more time. And he shows up. When I am working, he is waiting. <laughs> when I am resting, he is working out his salvation in my life. Thank you, Lord. We're going to give up our own righteousness. 
for the righteousness of God. And we will never be put to shame nor disappointed in our expectations when we put our trust in Jesus in every situation of our life. Amen? Awake to righteousness. You are qualified, innocent, forgiven, accepted, approved, and loved. Join Connie Witter as the journey through the Book of Romans continues in Awake to Righteousness Volume 2 and be empowered by grace to live a righteous life. Available now. Awake to Righteousness Volumes 1 and 2. Also available as a group Bible study package. Call 918-994-6500 or visit ConnieWitter.com to order or download your copy today. Because of Jesus Ministries introduces our first children's storybook, Are You a Chicken Head? by Connie Witter. This fun little book asks the big life question, what's true about you? Mommy, that girl called me a chicken head. Is that true, Victoria? Are you a chicken head? What does Jesus say about you? For many years, I have shared this true story to encourage others to believe what Jesus says about them. I pray this book will inspire parents, grandparents, and children alike to confidently respond. I believe what Jesus says about me. Order this delightful book today. Call 918-994-6500 or go online at becauseofjesus.com where Bible studies are always in the light of Jesus. The struggle is real. Life happens to all of us. But there's a better way to live. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Because of Jesus Ministries invites you to a Women of Grace conference. Experience powerful, grace-filled messages from Connie Witter, Nicole Marbach, Trisha Gunn, Gwen Myrie, Shannon Orr, Sherry Reether, and Christy Rose. Come be with us in Birmingham, Alabama, Branson, Missouri, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Morton, Illinois, Chicago, Illinois, Orlando, Florida, and Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. You're free. You're free. Remember that you're free. You're free from fear. You're free from condemnation. You're free from guilt. You're free from trying to earn God's favor. You're free. For more information or to register, go to womenofgrace.us or call 918-994-6500. We look forward to seeing you there. Because of Jesus Ministries is your resource for grace-filled, Jesus-focused Bible studies and curriculum for all ages. Adult Bible studies, books, devotionals for girls and teens, DVDs, CDs, and MP3s. We offer group Bible study packages as well. Connect with us and check out our many free resources online at ConnieWitter.com, where Bible studies are always in the light of Jesus.